Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with the Shakespeare Center team, uh, Wendy Guerin, who is a board member, Ben Donenberg, who is the executive artistic director, and Chris Anthony, an education program consultant. They have all generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you thank for you. having us. So the Shakespeare Center is just wonderful, and it's it's been around for, for so long under your leadership. And yes, it is, and yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> so, so talk about the range of programs that you offer. Just sort of give us a little bit of the lay of the land, and let's, let's really chat about how uh, the organization is managed from the board uh, perspective, from the education and programming perspective, how it interacts with artists, and, and its future uh, going forward. The Shakespeare Center, um, it's always been my impulse since I uh, founded the company all those years ago to um, make sure that all of the art we create is excellent art and that it has practical applications in our community. That's been my mantra, so to speak. And we've been creating great art that does great things for decades now, because that's really what I really want to do. And Wendy, you're, you as a board member, you have a lot of different organizations that are vying for your time, and particularly with your other roles. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to serve on the Shakespeare Center's board? And, and also, please describe uh, some of your other lives, mm -hmm. your professional mm -hmm. lives. Well, you know, I, I've known about Ben's work since almost the very beginning when he was in Pershing Square. Um, and then at the Ford, uh, the outdoor Ford Theater uh, here in LA, always captivated. And in my role as a grant maker, um, we've supported the Shakespeare Center. Um, and the reason I've, I've uh, stepped up to join the board at this moment is this is a, an important point of inflection for the company. Uh, we have a capital campaign underway to uh, completely transform our building uh, into um, sort of a shining star, uh, overlooks downtown. It's in a very transitional immigrant community. Uh, we serve a lot of kids in that community. And by creating a first class theater in our space, um, it, it means the company will be more sustainable, but will also be able to you know, deliver better uh, service. And um, you're the president and CEO of the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. So that's right. it's a $400 million endowment. You're, you're making grants to a lot of different uh, organizations with the objective of, of strengthening civil society here in Los Angeles. So you have a lot of choices that you could be making. Yes, and you know, of course, time is the most scarce resource. It's more scarce than money, <laughs> hard, hard to believe. Um, but this is, imp this is important and you can see, uh, you know, every nonprofit, uh, every person, I think, uh, every board member has the best of intentions. They want to see good happen in the community, no matter what level of, what kind of service they're doing. and. Ben's organization, Shakespeare Center, is on the precipice of a big step up. You know, so it's a good thing about to get way better. And so um, it's it's fun to get involved in a moment of transition where we can really have impact and deliver more to the people of Los Angeles. That sort of segues into Chris's involvement because just like Wendy, in your field, you've had a lot of different options. Just like Ben, in his field, he's had a lot of different options. This is where you have decided to uh, spend a portion of your time. And as yes. you move <laughs> to Chicago and, you, and you're, you're remaining connected. So talk about the work that you've done and, and the legacy that, that you have built here and, and how you, you plan to continue, particularly in the programmatic side. Well, on the programmatic side, um, Shakespeare Center has the willpower family of programs, I like to call them. Um, it started actually with Willpower to Schools, which was a teacher's initiative in 1992, and then in 1993, um, Willpower to Youth, which is where I have spent a lot of my time. <laughs> Um, I, I entered in year three of the program and I'm still hanging around. So we have um, evolved in our thinking about youth and Los Angeles and what we can do as artists to really help young people and now veterans transition through important phases of their lives. So for young people, it's about the transition from adolescence to adulthood, right? For, for veterans, it's about the transition from military to civilian life. Um, and I think that in my work, 
Um, I am blessed to have an amazing community of artists. Los Angeles is a very arts rich community. And so um, we have many programs, um, but I think that one of the things that Willpower to Youth has been able to provide and our extension programs, um, Willpower to Schools, Will to Lead, Play On, um, we've been able to help young people move through transitions um, from uh, high school to college, um, from never having a job to being, you know, gainfully employed. Um, we've been able to really spend quality time using the arts as our tool and using Shakespeare's words as um, a starting place. One of the things that I find so interesting is that in Shakespeare's time, you're talking about a society that shared a language a society that was a continuum of class, so from the lower class to the to the upper class, where lived experiences of the audiences and the performers that uh, experienced Shakespeare from their various uh, perspectives had an awful lot in common, whereas then you transport that into LA where you have different lived experiences of both the actors and, and the audiences. Um, you have different cultural settings, you have different languages, you have all these differences and people are coming together and it becomes a way to connect. Actors who have different perspectives and different, sharing their knowledge, really collaborating and exchanging and learning and, and giving and the same with the audiences. You have this different experience that is so totally alien from the environment in which the plays were originally staged and that really goes back to that connection with the Los Angeles experience and the Los Angeles funding that, that you're doing, Wendy. Well, you know, I think lots of um, both individuals and, and other kinds of funders, it, we are totally sold on the idea of arts education as uh, particularly for disadvantaged kids, um, as a way to engage them and find their passion, help keep them in school. Um, we know that the life's, you know, that arts can be transformative and a project like this, you know, approaches um, that arts education from a way that's more than just class, sequential classroom education. It's making it come alive in a way, and it's paying kids. It could be a first job. And, you know, teaching more than uh, the first job, you know, showing up on time, mm -hmm. uh, figuring out how to get along with people. Um, Expressing uh, your opinion to adults, which is not exactly. always encouraged. <laughs> Listen, listening to somebody with a different point of view exactly. or a different interpretation of, uh, of a particular uh, part of the play, different, different, using different words. Right, looking, looking at different ways to interpret situations and then make personal choices that inform the way you behave in that situation. And, so, yeah, and, we think art transforms, right? right. Um, it can transform us by just seeing something that's meaningful. But the Shakespeare Center, it really mm -hmm. transforms across a lot of dimensions. Talk a little bit about the genesis of the Veterans Program and how it is shaped um, and, and where, do you, where you think it is going in the future. Well, it, it's been more formalized most recently, but we actually explored this possibility in the early 90s um, when we went to the West Los Angeles uh, VA and started putting on Free Shakespeare Outdoors. We worked with a program at the VA called Compensated Work Therapy. Um, it's changed. They don't really have compensated work therapy anymore, but the, the, the notion underneath it is very similar. And we see how much immersing oneself in art can help someone navigate that transition. And um, we've spoken about how, you know, the military puts you into a very specific um, format and regiment. I, I was very fortunate to do a program called the Joint Civilian Orientation Conference, where I actually trained very, very briefly with Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, Army, and Navy. I went to all the different bases and I did training. And um, I, I saw how people are shaped to go out and protect our country. But what we know is that when they come back, 
There isn't anything really in place formally to nurture that transition back to mainstream civilian life. It can feel like stepping off of a cliff. That's right. And USC did a study a couple of years ago that said the single most important thing to support a successful transition to mainstream civilian life is a job. That is what they really need. And we have expertise in creating transitional employment experiences. And so we uh, tracked back to those first experiences with compensated work therapy, and now it's supported employment and all of that. And we went back to the VA and um, created a partnership with their um, employment development de department. And we work with veterans who are in rehab treatments. They're not just veterans who have come back that are ready to go to work that may be dealing with a lot of issues, but these are veterans who have actually signed up and enrolled in some kind of treatment protocol. And their social workers and their case managers and their, their people that are working with them through the VA have determined that at this point in their lives, they're at a precipice, just like our organization is, just like young people are, that having a competitive employment environment that they can work in that is constructive and creative will be of great value to them. And this is an entree into the whole employment ecosystem in Los Angeles, the creative right. employment ecosystem. Right. The creative economy, it's the, we're the fourth largest sector in Los Angeles. Like This right. is a major it's Something sector. like one out of eight jobs in Los Angeles mm -hmm. are in the creative economy, mm -hmm. which spans from toy design mm -hmm. to uh, more conventional arts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to, to filmmaking yeah. and so on and so yes, forth. So yes. what you're actually doing is creating a gateway to transition from this highly structured environment where the skills are applicable but distinct, mm -hmm. and you're creating a bridge and a gateway into, into that, that uh, very powerful economic sector. And, and there's also a question that is underneath the veterans in our program that we're addressing too, that, that Chris helped me define. And that was um, when you enroll and participate in the military, your expertise and your skills and your talents are all trained towards destruction. Right. And what we're doing is creating. So there is an antidote. Art provides an antidote to the mindset that is necessary to, to enroll, enlist, be a part of, and protect our country. You have to be able to get into that mindset to do the job that you're called on to do. But how? the question is, how do you navigate that transition from that environment into the into, into mainstream, a civilian, into civilian, a civilian and creativity and creative expression yes. and art. Yes, the, the, someone once said the, the opposite of war is not peace. The opposite of war is art, right? It's, it's, not, it go, it's not about um, conflict versus non-conflict. It's about destruction versus creation. And I think in young people seeing themselves as creators, in veterans, reconnecting with themselves as creators. Um, I think that the community aspect of it fosters, we, we work very intentionally to create a supportive community. And so all of those things, whether they're young people or veterans, whether it's in school or after school or in the summer, I think the idea that as humans, we are creators, we are here to make, um, and we are here to build, is what's going to help us build a stronger community. Wendy Guerin, Chris Anthony, Ben Donenberg, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Shakespeare Center with us, and thank you so much for your insights. You're welcome, and thank, thank you. you. Thank you for yours. <laughs>